ATM free. What I'm here to talk to you about today is how it feels to drive. And what we're coming up to first coming over the Nerva Brink, let's take a look. Yeah, there you go, that's a classic E30 there, drifting out and about. To be honest, this car feels slow to respond. That's how it feels. It doesn't feel quick. And I mean, yeah, I suppose it's a little bit unfair to say this car is really that old. But it is old. It's 21 years old as the E30 M3, and in car terms, that is old. And you feel it in the corners. You just sort of throw it at the apex, and hey, there you go, you've got some classic, classic drifting there. It is a fun car to drive, there's no doubt about it. And to be honest, this thing feels raw. It sounds raw, as I'm sure you can hear. This thing sounds guttural, it sounds visceral and aggressive. E30 is not a car that you're ever going to mistake for being modern. The steering wheel is thin, the whole car is raw and visceral. It also has the old style graphics, the old styling, it looks angular, it looks aggressive and attacking. And that's the whole story with the M3. And that's the reason why I chose it, because we can see how the modern age has stalled the edges, how the M3 has become more refined and relaxed. So let's take a look at the E92 now. So we're setting off in the new M3s, the E92. And quite instantly, there are differences. For one thing, we've got a shitload more power. And that's already showing itself in the corners as the car is now just going very sideways. Some of the things that you don't really notice when you're looking and driving is the fact that the interior has moved on. The materials are nice softer, the wheel is thicker, and the whole thing is much more solidly screwed together. Styling has moved on as well. To be honest, I prefer the look of modern cars. I don't know why, they just seem to be more curvaceous, more, less angular. I don't really like angles. Angles look harsh and abrasive, and I prefer streamlined beauty. It puts you in the mind of some really attractive girl's hips. Well, how is it to drive, really? What is it like when, once you get a bit light the skin? Well, I've just thrown it at a slow corner, and we've got a lot of grip going in. I boot it coming out of the corner, and we've got a lot of drifting. There it is again, having to control the rear end of the car. The first difference you were gonna, you're going to notice when you're driving the new M3 is that it just drifts so much easier and that's because of you got that's because of the extra power just forces the rear out of line so much quicker and that's the other thing the power the BMW has really gone faster as it's gotten older it's doubled its power it is really 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 piled on the pace and the weight and these are the main differences that you notice when you're driving these types of cars and to be honest the traits I'm finding here in the M3 seem to span across well, basically every car in the game, you know. Basically the new cars are all more curvaceous, they're all a lot quicker in a straight line than their old fashioned counterparts. And they all seem to have this prevailing tendency to oversteer. But what we're going to do now is we're going to take the E30 M3 and we're also going to take the E92 and we're going to take them for a lap around the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit and I'm just going to narrate the laps to see what happens here. And we're going to run these videos side by side so we can really get an idea of just how much faster the E92 is going. So, let's cut to the one lap battle. And we are off, and here we go, both cars struggling for traction off the line, but now the M3, the E92 has got some traction and it is heading along. And you can already see it's well ahead as they go ahead under the Michelin board. But into the first corner, the M3's already, the E92 is there, it has got apex and it is sliding on the way out, the E30 there not quite sliding so much. In the second corner, the E92 going nice and smoothly through there, but the E30 losing traction in the middle of the corner, not so well sorted it would seem. E92 understeering, E30 seems to have apexed a little bit easier, maybe it's a li maybe the light lightness of it is helping here, 
and he but he it's quite clear to see that the E92 is really starting to power ahead getting further and further and further ahead the power of the E92 really helping here not so much the grip it doesn't appear to be going that much quicker in the corners or making them seem any easier however now it seems well composed very well composed through there from the E92 and E30 also very well done easing on the power a little bit earlier I think both cars making a symphony of sound right now and the E92 well ahead of the it's actually exiting the hairpin as the E30 is entering it both cars similar handling there and the E92 going through the smooth going through the Schumacher S nice and easy about 86 miles an hour what will the E30 be doing doesn't even get to 86 miles an hour but still that's a solid effort at 80 and the E92 into its next corner well 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 ahead of the E30 at this point absolutely barnstorming this car and there you go just now using its power advantage as the E30 is yet to take the next corner understeering offline but then again nothing too bad right to curbs a little bit and now the power game is very 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 clear to see here comes another here comes a fiddly little chicane the E92 there not struggling at all Ooh, sliding on exit sliding on exit that is not bad and it's into the final hairpin the E30 now through the chicane not bad at all on the start no theatrics there really from the E30 perhaps it just doesn't have enough power to slide at that type of speed or then maybe it does as it's starting to lose it through the uh, final hairpin and the E92 has already finished the lap and now we're just waiting for the E30 to come, along, come across the line and there it is revving up how will it hit 100 before it crosses the line oh, of course it will and there you have it